Welcome back. Georgia Congressman Andrew Clyde planning to use a possible government spending fight to block funding on the federal and state prosecutions, which are targeting former President Trump. Joining me right now, the man himself, Georgia Congressman Andrew Clyde, a member of the Appropriations Committee and the Subcommittee on Commerce, Justice and Science. Congressman, good to have you. Thanks very much. Walk us through your plans. Well, good morning, Maria. It's great to be with you. Well, you know, the American people are sick and tired of all talk and no action. So I'm on the Appropriations Committee, just like you said. I'm in a position to uh, to act upon this. So we're going to introduce an amendment to defund the prosecution of any presidential candidate prior to the 2024 election. And also that extends to state and local as well, that their federal funding will be cut if they in, if they go forward with the prosecution of any federal candidate prior to a presidential candidate, that is, so you prior think, to the 2020 process. So you think this is all political? It is all political. Absolutely, it's all political. I mean, just look at the timeline of, of court appearances, uh, court hearings, uh, you know, coinciding directly with the major Republican election events. This is direct election interference President Biden is using the Department of Justice as the political interference arm of the Democrat Party, and it's unacceptable, and we're going we're gonna to stop it. Well, we, we want to know what the plan is for the appropriations bills. You have 11 bills to finish in a two-week period when you all get back right before the government go, runs out of money. I spoke with the Speaker of the House on Sunday, Kevin McCarthy, about this spending fight uh, once you all return. He joined me on Sunday Morning Futures. Watch this. Will you be able to deepen this probe uh, while also battling Democrats and the White House about funding government by September 30th? Walk us through your scenarios that you expect. Do you think we'll see a short-term continuing resolution while you finish the appropriations process? Well, one of our goals is to change Washington. We're tired of these omnibus bills where Congress doesn't do their work like the appropriations. So in the debt ceiling, we put a provision in there. If you didn't do your job, there was a 1 percent cut across the board. It made a lot of members mad, but they're actually doing their work. I don't believe we'll have enough time to pass all the appropriation bills by September 30th. So I would actually like to have a short-term CR only to make our argument stronger. Because, Maria, if we shut down, all of government shuts it down, investigation and everything else, it hurts the American public. Uh, it's a good point that he made, Congressman. If the government shuts down, everything shuts down. Maybe the Democrats want to shut down uh, so that this investigation into Joe Biden uh, uh, stops. You're on the Appropriations Committee. Does that s plan sound right to you? How will you finish the work? Well, we cannot have a clean CR, that's for certain. And that would be just extending Nancy Pelosi's terrible policies. You know, they elected the majority, gave the Republicans the majority, so we would change things in Washington, not go forward with a clean CR. So any CR is going to have to be qualified. That means border security. That means uh, um, uh, weaponization of the Department of Justice. That means taking the wokeness out of the military. There's going to have to be a lot of policy changes in any CR that I would ever vote for. Um, so that's that that's a big issue right there. Well, that that is a big issue. A lot of your colleagues don't agree with that. So you've got another fight uh, going into the, the deadline. It sounds like we're going to have a government shutdown. Well, you know, um, I think our work will still continue even if we have a government shutdown. Uh, but we have got to do what the American people sent us here to do and gave us the majority to do. And that is change Washington. Just like the speaker said, a continuing resolution is not going to change Washington. Uh, so we're going to have to finish the approach process, which is, um, you know, why I'm introducing this amendment. It, the, the Commerce Justice Science Appropriation has not yet come to the full committee. When it does, I'll introduce this. And I think uh, we will strike a blow against uh, the weaponization of the Department of Justice against uh, election interference. Well, what, what's the timing on this? When, when will we know if, in fact, that amendment uh, resonates? Well, it'll have to be before the end of September, I think, because, you know, as soon as we go back into uh, session, which is uh, September the 12th, then we have two appropriations left to go through committee. Um, and Commerce Justice Science is one of them. And, and I, I certainly hope that uh, it's a priority for the Republican majority. What are your priorities and, and how will you get the Senate uh, on board with those priorities as well? For example, holding back money for the FBI. The FBI wants three and a half billion dollars for a new headquarters. Uh, they want that headquarters to be bigger than the Pentagon. Will you be able to hold that money back or will the Senate go against your priorities? Well, I, I know that at least half of that money has been reserved, has been literally fenced 
for just the the repair of the current FBI building. The rest of it, we tried in appropriations. Uh, that amendment failed. But yet some Republicans came to me and said, you know, I made the wrong vote on that. Well, we're going to give them another opportunity when the actual bill comes to the House floor. That would be financial services, general government bill to strip that money from the FBI's uh, new building because the FBI does not need a new building. Uh, they don't need one bigger than the Pentagon. Uh, in fact, what I think should happen is be they should be decentralized across the country. I think that's better for the country, better for the FBI as well. I think they'll be more efficient. Will you be able to do anything about all of these Securities and Exchange Commission rules on business in terms of the climate change agenda? The SEC is meeting in a closed door meeting tomorrow. And Gary Gensler is going to try to get his ideas through, which have included new costs for business. Banks are crying foul. Businesses are worried that it's going to be much more expensive given these new rules about identifying climate change risks. Well, you know, deregulation, like what happened under President Trump, is definitely the way to go here. Adding more regulation, well, that's a Democrat way of doing things, and, and that does not help our economy. It does not help businesses. So we do have things called the Congressional Review Act to review those, any new rules that an agency puts forward, and we can certainly use that, the power, that power, uh, in addition to the power of the purse. Well, it's unfortunate that the period that we're in is dominated by indictments, investigations, impeachment, Congressman, uh, as opposed to the work that the American people want done. Where are you on an impeachment inquiry? Will you vote for it? Well, I'm certainly um, uh, in favor of an impeachment inquiry. We have never seen corruption like this at the executive level in my lifetime. I mean, this is the most corrupt president. You just have to read the FBI's FD-1023 form of the interview with, this, with the president of Burisma to see that uh, Joe Biden and his son, Hunter Biden, were, were bribing, were requiring from really extorting uh, Burisma to the tune of $10 million, $5 million for each one of them. I mean, come on. This is using taxpayer dollars to leverage money into his own pocket. You know, that's Bidenomics, I guess, you know, putting money in Biden's pocket at the expense of the American taxpayer. Just to be clear, we've heard allegations of bribery, money laundering going on in the Biden family. You're also saying that the Biden family or Joe Biden himself committed extortion. Is that what you just said? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if just read the 1023. Uh, I mean, the FD 1023. Every American citizen should be reading that document. In, fi in fact, you can go to Clyde.house.gov and forward slash Biden crime family, and you can see that document is up there on our, on our website. And yet, Donald Trump has been indicted four times. Yes. <laughs> can you imagine that? 91 fake, false uh, indictments. And here we have a sitting president who is who has done so much criminal activity uh, using foreign foreign companies to do it, to, to enrich himself and his family. Congressman, we're going to be keeping a spotlight on it for sure. Thanks very much for being here this morning.